Okay, this is kind of a, a, a quick production for uh, Kerry Cassidy. Uh, a, kind of an overview of, of Giza and, and what I know. And, uh, okay, right off the bat, this is where Giza is. There used to be a lake, Lake Morris. It was the size of Lake Erie, and according to Herodotus, it was actually hand dug. Whether that's true or not, I don't know, but it used to have a lake. Uh, put a channel across here, they dug that, put a dam across the Nile and there are miles and miles and miles of tunnels everywhere throughout the whole area. Okay. From uh, the Oriental Institute of Chicago, it's one of their images. This great pyramid's there and as you can see it has the causeway down to the Nile and of course, the middle and the, uh, the smaller, the red pyramid. And then the Nile was long here. This is where the Sphinx is here. Right here is the Sphinx Temple. The Nile was up to the base of this, and then down across here. It was all. It was much lower. But okay, topographical. So it shows Great Pyramid here. And it shows Causeway. This is where the Nile used to be. You can see. It's the old, uh, right there is where the Sphinx Temple is. This is actually from uh, the Oriental Institute. And around all the pyramids was a retaining wall. That is completely accepted. That's standard knowledge and is not arguable. This is Colonel Howard Weiss's drawing. He, he did it was very extensive in the late 1800s, was early 1800s. But there was a well shaft that they dug out. It was called the charm, or, but it was a well shaft that was in front of the Great Pyramid. It's no longer in existence, as are many things, many features of the Great Pyramid. But it, he dug, they dug it down to 47 feet. And this is, okay, now this is a wire diagram. Uh, Oriental Institute and so you can see the retaining wall and then this is the part that I've done it's just the lower portion which is the subchamber descending passage um, but you can also see that here's the causeway going down to the Nile so it shows the relative elevation of the Nile which is down here with the subterranean chamber which is 100 feet below bedrock uh, the original theory for some sort of water pump would have been for a lock system, and this is, uh, I believe it's from Greg Martin did this, um, this picture which showed Kunkel's vision, who, who came up with the idea of a water pump for elevating blocks, as you can see here, uh, just by using some water locks, you know, little doors and water coming down. And, couple guys drag it up and open the low doors. Very, very incredibly simple and incredibly quick. Great idea. Uh, just old map diagram. Uh, for me, the most interesting thing was the water tables. Shows relative water table of the Mediterranean, water table of the plateau, and the subterranean chamber in relevance. Okay, now this is this is a uh, satellite image from uh, a Russian satellite and uh, high res and it's at a slight angle and so what I have done is I wanted to determine where various things were with exactness. I actually took Great Pyramid here and I took the four corners, uh, the exact four corners I was able to then triangulate here, which shows the midpoint, and I did from where the, the the tapers are on each side and crossed it there so double tapered and that that is the midpoint at base level. And I did the peak, midpoint at the peak, and that's approximately 500 feet so I subdivided the Z axis here uh, to five parts, so that's approximately 100 feet, and then I dropped on the z-axis straight down 100 feet to the subchamber, and that gave, and then I did the offset, 
gave the exact point of the pit of the subchambers at 100 feet below the ground. So that's exactly where the pit is. And what I did that for was that I had determined right here, which is the Sphinx, Sphinx Temple, Egyptian Water Department had drilled right there and drilled down 30 feet looking for the water table and determined water table and they hit Rose Quartz Granite at that point which means since it's not indigenous of the area that means something's there and that would have been the relative elevation and possible location for the exit tunnel. Now all the indigenous teachings say that all the pyramids have tunnels that went down to the Sphinx area. So this is Sphinx area, so I determined the final location, the destination of where the tunnel would have come out. Happens to be a, a later building here was offset by 45, which is interesting. But what we found is that it is exactly, absolutely exactly 45 degree offset. And uh, that is completely relevant to the pit shaft. That is absolutely relevant, and, uh, and I'll show that a little bit later. And then another interesting thing was the dead end shaft, which is kind of the little purple dotted line. If you, if you extend it out, that's 100 feet below the surface, there is a multi-room, three-level, at least three-level, chamber in here. It's called the water shaft or tomb of Osiris or whatever latest name they use. And that's the exact point of the entrance. If you go down a hundred feet and it took four years of pumping to pump the water out, there's a tunnel that goes in this direction. And that's the exact location. Same elevation as the dead end shaft and that uh, strongly suggests that there's a, a, a major complex of tunnels under there. There's other evidence, but that is, you know, concrete. Okay, that's that's a, a really crappy drawing, but it shows the that uh, water shaft. It shows multiple rooms, and another shaft down, multiple rooms, and, there, and then drops down to a water area, area with a uh, some columns, etc. Okay, this is a very nice drawing which shows this is a room I did. It's a dead end shaft. It goes like 47 or 57 feet to a dead end. And then you can see the pit here. And you can even see that they extrapolated an extra depth. So it looks like the basic subchamber. And then. Uh, so that's the descending passage. Interesting couple items. This has inset stones and it's pointing towards this here and this here and those are granite inlays. And uh, there's actually some insets and a round hole here. And then right here you see what's called Petri's granite block, which is interesting uh, the stuff you just don't see. Interesting. And then uh, this was another one of the drawings. And at the bottom of the, the drawing, it says right in here, just shows the, the subchamber side and the top. It, to the best of their their abilities at the time, because it wasn't fully excavated, it says right here, Pairings Excavation 36 feet deep. So it was actually dug deeper, and now it has been filled in. And uh, oh, this just a, this is just a close-up, so you can actually see that is exactly what that says from 1929. History is raised constantly there. Uh, this just shows subchambers down here. It shows that the king's chamber is directly above it.